So if we can refine our procedure into something a little bit more than this, about what do we expect for the speed of sound? About 340 meters per second. About 340 meters per second. Okay. So here are the materials we're going to use. We've got a graduated cylinder with water and a rubber band on it. And I have a length of PVC pipe here. And the pipe is open on both ends. So the purpose of the water is to basically give me an adjustable length pipe. If I have the pipe all the way in, the water's up to this level. So the air that goes in the pipe actually only goes this far. So I have a pretty short pipe. If I were to make this pipe vibrate, would I get a high frequency or a low frequency sound? High, yeah, short resonator, high frequency. If I pull the pipe out and I make it really long, low frequency. Okay, so I basically have a resonator now that I can adjust. This is my resonator. My, I have a lot of tuning forks here. These are gonna be my, nat my driving frequencies. Now, a few notes on how to use tuning forks. If you don't have a mallet, the heel of your shoe is generally an okay place to strike a tuning fork to make a sound because your shoes are generally going to be made out of rubber or something like that. What we don't want to do is strike it on the tables. That will dent it and possibly change the timbre or even the pitch of the tuning fork. Okay. So we actually know these are pretty overtoned heavy, right? But if we strike it, we can listen for the fundamental. can dampen that with my hand. So we hear, I, you heard it when, you can hear it better when you're up close to it. The fundamental is the lower pitch that you hear. So if this is C256, this one is C512. Right. But can you hear the two overtones there? If you're going for the lower one that you can hear. This one works better with this pipe. So I'm going to do this one now. I'm going to hold it over, and I'm going to start moving both together. Did you hear something there? Mm -hmm. So does the pipe then have to match a frequency with the overtone, or does the overtone still get no. on its way? You want to try to get the fundamental. So you could drop them all together. You could get both. If you measure the length of the pipe for some overtone that, or some pitch that's not the fundamental, you're going to find that your calculations for the speed of sound are way off. Because what you do is you find the length at which you get the most resonance. And how do you know when it resonates? Amplitude. Amplitude. You get that nice loud sound. And what I've done is I've put my rubber band at about that place. So that lets me use a meter stick to then measure the length of the tube when I experience resonance. I'm also going to measure the diameter of the tube and the frequency of the tuning fork. The fundamental frequency of the tuning fork is written on the bottom. Using those three numbers, I can calculate the speed of sound, assuming I'm measuring the fundamental and not some other overtone. Questions so far? Sorry, what? You need the frequency of the overtone to find the speed of sound. You could still figure it out, but you'd have to know exactly which overtone it was yeah. and how far above the fundamental you are. Okay. Hopefully, if you have a chance to do this, you'll get to try. I have different lengths of pipe with slightly different diameters and different tuning forks. So you get to try it a few times and compare your data with some people. See if you can refine this procedure to get a really good value for the speed of sound. Are you going to watch that? Three hands, can you stand by? Can we record like what our tones like are loud first so if we want to look back on it? Definitely. I really encourage that. Um, how does the like diameter affect it? Any responses to that? How would the diameter of the tube affect the sound? Can you do you want to choose somebody or just you look back mm -hmm. at somebody? thinking is like the wavelength times the frequency of the uh, tube. Yeah. So like how does diameter affect? Right. 
So I imagine that I don't know this exactly, but I imagine that diameter as well as length can change the size of the wave that can fit. Mm. Oh. I don't know exactly. That'd be something new for us. Mm. Did I see other hands too? Yeah, I saw other hands. Okay, so when we were mixed with Mr. Smith, we talked about the uh, relationship um, between the the fundamental and the perfect fifth, mm -hmm. and they said that that stay the same. That relationship, the difference between the two, stay the same between all pitches. Ooh, so that sounds like we're starting to move away from this procedure specifically and into something else. Mm, exactly. Okay, then that might be a good time to stop the recording.